Hey guys, welcome to the third video on nomenclature. All right, and so this one is all going to be about the weird parts of nomenclature. All right, this is stuff that uh, they kind of, br at least when I took this class last year, they kind of brushed over this uh, system of naming. But uh, don't worry, it's nothing too bad. It just can get slightly confusing. But if anything, always you know you can put it on your card. Um, this isn't like one of those extremely high yield topics, but it's still a good thing to know later on. And especially if you're going to go take the MCAT, a lot of the times in the uh, organic chemistry section, they will not draw you the structure. And instead, they will use names like uh, not even the uh, normal system of naming that we showed you guys before, like the IU pack stuff. They'll give you like slightly common names. And so um, knowing these uh, forms of nomenclature are good. All right. And so let's get started. So I showed you guys before in the last video, the IU pack system of naming right where we we do stuff like three ethyl two two dimethyl heptane or something okay and and so this one isn't going to be like that at all so i'll just start out by drawing it it'll be much clearer what i'm talking about when i'm showing you guys so i'm going to draw out a butane molecule right butane is four carbons one two three four and it's a straight chain alkane, no substituents, so we just write butane, okay? If we have the substituent, right, we would write it as R, right? And then one, two, three, four, and this is just going to be uh, the general name of butyl substituent, okay? R group is anything, it's, this is just going to show that the um, four carbon chain is a substituent, so we have the YL ending. Okay, so that shouldn't be anything new, you've seen that before. And so, let's look at this molecule now. So I'm still going to draw an R, it's still going to be substituent. But now I'm going to do that molecule, okay? So... If this was a main chain, it would have been it wouldn't have been too bad. Okay, if I just erase this bond here, we would just have that. That's just four carbons. That's again just the butane. Remember, single bonds can rotate. That's why I can draw it in this little weird little boat structure rather than just like that. Either way it works. Single bonds can rotate, so it's exactly the same molecule. Yet, because it's a, it's a substituent, it's a little bit hard to name this sort of thing. Because we've seen substituents like 2-methyl, but how do you do it when you have this chain and then a separate carbon coming out of it? Well, we give it uh, these common names. So these are going to be kind of something that you're going to have to remember. Um, it's not intuitive, really. Okay, but again, you could just put this on your card. So in this case, what this molecule would be, it's called a sec, S-E-C, butyl. Okay, it still has four carbons, one, two, three, four, but we give it this new designation of sec butyl. And so if it's more comfortable for you guys to draw it, um, to see it this way, I'll try to draw it out like this for you guys. So we have carbon CH, CH3, CH2, CH3, and labeling them. This was our carbon 1, this is our carbon 2, this is our carbon 3, and this is our carbon 4, okay? So that's called sec butyl. Let's go on to another one. Again, we start out with the R, substituent, and we're going to draw it that. So we have four carbons, 2, 3, 4. So it's still going to be a butyl similar to what we've had before but now we give this new one a designation of isobutyl okay and so look at the difference between uh, these two we have this carbon on carbon one but in the iso form we simply just shift it to be on that one so we removed it from carbon one and just put it on carbon two okay so that's isobutyl and now we're going to have one, uh, two more left. If we put 
another R, and we have this structure. All right, it could either be drawn like that, or sometimes they'll just draw it uh, maybe a little bit more angled. So like that, that, okay. So that's still gonna be four carbons if we count. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's still butyl. But now we give this one a designation of tert butyl. T E R T, tert butyl. Okay? And uh, you're going to be, I'll guarantee anyone anything that the tert designation is what you'll see more than any of the other ones. Just because you're going to see it um, come exam three. Okay? Um, a lot of. Uh, Reagents you'll see when you're doing substitution and elimination reactions. You'll see one in particular called tert butoxide, which, uh, if anyone is curious, just looks like this. Um, sorry. That exact thing. And the R group is that. All right, an oxygen uh, with negative charge and uh, acts as a base. So you're guaranteed to see something like that. So that one I would 100% recommend you guys know. So we still have one more left. So let's draw an R. Okay. We draw the R, and again, common theme here is that it's going to be uh, uh, four carbons almost. Wrong color. All right. And so we're going to have, no, I shouldn't draw it that way, an R. Okay, so we have this substituent. So all the other ones we've seen so far were four carbons. This one is going to be a little bit different. This isn't going to be four carbons. This is going to be five carbons. Okay, we look, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and the designation we give for this is NEO, N-E-O. Okay, and I'm not going to write butyl for this one just because there are not four carbons in this case. We're not talking about uh, a four carbon group. And you also definitely see this one for exam three uh, when it comes to, again to substitution elimination reactions. So keep that one in the back of your head. It's one that they love to not show in a lecture, but sort of hint at but it'll pop up randomly on a practice test and you guys might not know what to do with it. So Neo, keep in the back of your head. It's gonna uh, come up later on, all right? And so these are just some of the, uh, these are some that you're gonna encounter. They, I doubt they'll ask you to name it. What they'll do is they'll probably give you the name of it and expect you to maybe know how it looks, but it will not be complicated, all right? That's all that it kind of uh, consists of. These two over here shouldn't be anything different from what we've seen in the previous videos right it's only really those uh four over here that you guys should remember all right but again you know put it on your card if anything if you're killing yourself over this right before a test stop uh the chances of this really hurting your grade are extremely low all right it's, it's and if anything it'll be one question so if you're killing yourself over this right before a test just pop it on your car index card and move on with your life Okay, and so if you guys have any questions on this video, feel free to email me, feel free to contact the TA, um, and we'll be happy to explain it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this series on nomenclature. In the next one, we're going to be going over Newman projections, okay? So again, more alkane stuff. And after Newman projections, we're going to go on to uh, constitutional isomers, all right? And I'll see you guys in the next video.